guys here this evening? Should I talk in a deep voice so you think I'm... No, I'm just joking. <laughs> How, do you guys know who David Getter is? Yeah. yeah. Do I look like him? Yeah. For real? Yeah. That's what everyone in town is saying. People used to say I look like James Blunt, though. Do you guys know who James Blunt is? Yes. Yeah? Do you guys like James Blunt? Yeah? yeah? He's beautiful! <laughs> Bro! Okay, hey, let me share my story, Corey. Oh yeah, I could sing opera. I was like James Bond. Thanks, bro. He's a beautiful man. What? Yeah, Owen Wilson. Scared. Man, but it's just Rick tonight, okay? <laughs> you guys doing good tonight? Yeah? yeah? You guys doing good? Yeah. Did you go down to the fair tonight, today? Yeah? yeah? The fair was closed? Is that a shut down? Well, it's finished. Did it all finish? It's done. I thought it ended at like 6 tonight. Or no, 10. Yeah? Okay, well, hey. Um, so, um, I just want to tell you guys a story, okay? Corey? <laughs> Shouldn't leave, <we>, bro. <clears throat> Bring the other guys. So, you know, I grew up in a small town like Hol Holyhead. Holyhead. Yeah, I know, but it's holy. <laughs> so, I grew up in a small town. Like this place. You guys know what it feels like to grow up in a small town? Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it can be boring. How many of you guys have ever felt bored? Raise your hand. Yeah? Yeah? Do you guys know what it feels like to be bored for real? Yeah, raise your hand if you do. I know what it feels like to be bored. Do you know what it feels like to be unhappy? Yeah. No, for real. Do you know what it feels like to be unhappy? Do you guys, did you, do you guys, does anyone have a family with, uh, you know, mom and dad got divorced? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah? Yeah. Do you guys know what it feels like to have uh, a, a lot of friends, but you still feel empty? Yeah? Well, you know, I grew up in a small town like this. And it was really beautiful. It was right by the sea. It was in Washington State in America. And it was right by the sea. And we had huge mountains, just like yours, except bigger, with lots of snow. Wow. And it was super beautiful. And there was ton. It was just gorgeous. But it, but I was bored. Have you guys ever felt that way? Yeah. yeah? And uh, there wasn't a lot to do in my town, and at home, it was really full of, like, mom and dad, you know, arguing, and, and uh, it wasn't a happy, happy home when you went home. Can, can you guys relate to that? Yeah? Do you, you guys all have a perfect home? Yeah? Well, I didn't. It was, uh, it was, it was rough, and so I didn't want to go home. Have you guys ever uh, had a sports injury or any pain? Have you ever had a headache? Yeah? You guys, how many of you guys have had a headache? Yeah? How many of you guys have ever had a toothache? Yeah, toothaches are awful, aren't they? And uh, what do you take when you have a toothache? What? What? Painkiller, yeah? Yeah, I don't know, in America we have ibuprofen. Do you guys have ibuprofen here? Tylenol. Tylenol. Vicodin. Have you guys ever taken pain medicine? Raise your hand. Yeah? Maisie, have you taken pain medicine? Yeah. <laughs> so, what does pain medicine do? It relieves the pain. So, growing up, I had a lot of pain because my parents were separated. They were divorced. 
but they were separated when I was growing up. Do you know what that means? They split up. And so I would see dad some weekends, I would see mom, but they didn't get divorced yet. And, uh, and it hurt me a lot because I was a little boy. And I, and I just wanted a hug, you know, really, just to be real, you know. I just, as a little boy, you know, I just wanted love. And so I didn't have that growing up. And there was a lot of arguing. And I had three sisters, and they would gang up on me. And I was really skinny, and I was really short, if you can believe that. You know how tall I was? How tall are you, Liam? You don't know? I was four foot eleven when I was when I was uh, fifteen years old, fourteen years old. Four foot eleven, and a lot of people would tease me and reject me. And I don't know if you guys have ever been teased or rejected or felt alone or felt like you have no friends, but that's what I felt like. And so I would take the pain medicine of popularity and the pain medicine of of women. My deal was I didn't do drugs, I didn't drink. But my pain medicine was, was medicating my heart with, with fame and women. Okay? Does that make sense? Have you guys ever taken ibuprofen? Yes. Tylenol? Yes. It medicates the pain, right? But it doesn't deal with the root. Right? What's causing the pain? What's causing the pain? You know, if you have a toothache, you got to go to the dentist and have them drill down into the tooth, right? Yeah? Have you guys ever been to the dentist? Yeah, and they drill down the tooth and they go to the root and they fix it. But if you take ibuprofen, if you take ibuprofen or any of those pain medicines, it just covers over the pain, right? So I'm feeling good for three hours, four hours, and then all of a sudden, oh, oh. You know what I mean? So what about your heart? Think about your heart for a second. Think about any pain you may have in your heart from being rejected as a kid, from other friends, friends, or other people at school hurt, teased. That was me growing up. That was me growing up. And so I didn't have someone to go home. <clears throat> Zach, come up here for a sec. You know, you know, <clears throat> we're talking about God tonight, and God is real, and He's alive. Amen. He's alive. He created every single one of us, and so God created the family to to love each other. He loves us so much. No, for real, God loves us. He's not mad at us. How many of you guys think God's mad at us? Yeah, God's not the cops. God's not the police. God's not your principal. God's not your teacher. God's not your mom. God's not your dad. God is God, and he loves you. And God created the family to be a picture of love. And so let's say Zach is my dad. When I was a kid, I needed someone to go home and just love it, love it, dad. Oh. And then he says, I love you, son. You see that? You see that? Some of us didn't. Thanks, bro. Some of us didn't have that growing up. But see, God intended for us to have that. Do you guys see that? Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah? And so what happens when we grow up, when I was growing up and I was bored in my small town with nothing to do, and I'd go home and my dad would yell at me and I'd go to my room and I walk around all alone, I'm so bored, there's nothing to do in this town. And then I would go out, and some guys that I knew would go out, and they'd go smoke pot, and they'd go do dope, and they'd go drink, and they'd go have sex, and it was the ibuprofen, they're just medicating their heart, because really, they just want love. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? They just want a big hug. They just want to, to be known. You know? Like Chloe, they just, when Chloe comes home, she just wants someone to say, 
For real, come on, can we be real? I'm not here to be a fake and, to, and give some speech tonight. Yeah. That's not why I'm here. I'm here, at, I'm here to be real. And God loves us. And he, he, he wants Liam to know, man, that he cares about you. So I had a lot of hurt growing up, and I medicated it. I medicated it. Okay? So now, how old are you, Maisie? 14. How old are you, boy? 14. Who is 16? Liam. Is anyone 17? Liam was 16. Okay, so when I was 17 years old, I started to get super popular in school. I was a singer. Okay, have you guys ever, have you guys ever, uh, do you guys know what musicals are? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Where they say, what's a musical that you know about? The Wizard of Oz. Sound of Music. Have you guys ever seen Sound of Music? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so I started to get super popular. Liam? Super popular, okay? And it felt good. It felt good. Have you guys ever done something and people applaud you? Have you ever shot a goal and people say, Yeah. Yeah. And it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. But well, see, God, God wants us to feel good all the time, but there's only one way to feel good, and it's if we receive His love. It can't come from anything else but Him. It could come through pe- from Him through people, but it can't come from drugs, from alcohol. So how many of us, think about this. Think about this. How many of us have medicated? How many of us have medicated ourselves? You know? How many of you guys really want, really can, can it, can anyone relate to a home life like that where you felt unhappy coming home? Have you guys ever felt unhappy coming home? Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah? Have you guys ever been caught for doing something bad? Raise your hand. Yeah? So, I, hey, what's your name again, Mikey? Mikey. Shut up. So, hey, check this out. I started to go to college, I started to get really popular, and I started to get a lot of friends. But no one really knew me, okay? I had a lot of people that were like, what's up, Rick? Yeah. But really, I was super empty inside. Like, super empty. But I wanted to be known but, but everyone knew me, but they didn't really know me. Do you guys know anyone like that? Yeah. Yeah, for real? Yeah, I was medicating myself with fame and women. I had everything, okay? I had the girl, I had the popularity, and I had the voice to be famous, okay? Have you guys ever heard of Pavarotti? Yeah? yeah? Well, I went to school to be an opera singer. Have you guys ever heard of opera? Yeah. So I was going to be a famous opera singer. And I was on my own road. I was on my own path doing my thing. And I was going to be famous. And I was going to have the girl, have the money. And I was set for life. But then Jesus broke in. You know, because really I was empty. I was medicating myself. And you know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, Check this out. The Bible says that he has plans. God has plans for our life to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans for our future and hope. Good plans. Good plans. And the Bible also says in Psalm 139 that he fearfully and wonderfully made us. In our mother's womb, he made us with plans. Like with a purpose, Liam has a purpose from God. Do you know that? Connor has a purpose from God. Mikey has a purpose from God. And you know God loves us so much. God loves us so much that he wanted me to know that he has a plan for my life. And he broke in. You know the Bible says that there's a penalty for sin. Do you guys know that it says the wages of sin is death? It's death. 
And that's, and that's hell. The penalty for sin is hell. And you know, have you guys ever heard of Adam and Eve? Yeah? yeah? You know, Adam and Eve sin. Do you guys know what sin is? It's disobeying God. You know, and all of us have done bad things, right? Yeah. All of us have sinned. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And so a lot of us think of that and we think, oh man, God is so mad at us. But God is not mad at us. See, he made a garden in the beginning to be with Adam and Eve, okay? So come up here, Courtney, for a sec. Come up here, Liam. Come on, come on. Come on. Can you stand up here for a sec? Potter. Come on, you're a bold man. Okay. Adam, Eve, okay? They're in the garden. I'll play God, all right? So, so I'm God, all right? Hey, look at this. Check this out. What's up, Courtney? How are you doing, pal? Yeah. What's up, Connor? Let's do the let's do the arm pal. Yeah. I'm bringing it back, man. Yeah. Yeah. Connor's a man. I love him. Yeah. Courtney's the boy. I love her. I'm God right now. We're acting. Okay. You guys see this? I'm not mad at these guys. Hey, let's go build something. You guys want to build something? Yeah. I don't know. Let's have some fun today. You guys want to have some fun? Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, hey, let's name this animal over here. Uh, what do you want to name it? No. You want to name it? That was awesome, bro. You were funny. That was awesome. Um, all right, you guys can sit down. Good job. Let's give my hand. Hey, for real, God made the, the garden. You know the story of Adam and Eve? He made life so we could have a relationship with the living God. But he didn't make us robots. You know, Corey? We're not like robots. Like, come on, but check this out. I mean, okay, God, I will do that. You know, and you're just like living through life, like obeying. He's like, go pick up that piece of trash. Okay, you know, you're just like, I love you, God. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. He made us to have a relationship for real, like a real communication. And so I have a choice, and Adam and Eve had a choice. Choose God. But what happened? Sin came in, and sin came in, and it disobeyed. But see, that's not the end of the story, Liam. That's not the end of the story. See, because after Adam named the Liam, you know, and after there was sin, God came after us. See, he didn't want to judge us. The Bible says that, that there is a penalty for sin and it's hell, but he didn't want us to go to hell. The Bible says that Jesus, God desires for none to perish, none to go to hell. God doesn't desire for us to go to hell, and so he made a way. Amen. See, because God is perfectly holy. He is perfect. He's like, he is so perfect, and we are sinful. And so all of a sudden, there was this big gap between us and God. And God was like, oh no, I want to be with them. And we were like, either living our own way or just, oh no. And so God had to make a way for us to be with him. That's how much he loves us. It'd be like Liam being in prison, right? Am I saying your name right? Liam. 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 Oh. Yeah. It'd be like him being in prison. How many of you guys have ever been in jail? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Do you guys have you guys ever heard of of, uh, of um, is it called death row? Yeah. Yeah. Death row. Yeah. Where they're all they all got they're sentenced to death. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Do they have that in England and Wales? Yeah. No. Okay, they have that in America. Okay. It'd be like Liam being on death row and he's going. He did something so bad. It's done, and you're going, and you're sitting there, and you have 10 days left, 
90s, 80s. That's the picture of us. We couldn't get back to God. But God loved us so much, the Bible says, God loved us so much that he sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to take the place of us on death row and stand in our place and say, Liam, you are free. I will die for you. Amen. You are free. I will die for you. And he dies in our place. Jesus Christ died on a cross instead of us so that he can make a bridge back to God. Have you guys ever heard this story? Yeah. It's a true story. And so Jesus loves us so much that he died in our place. And if we, all we have to do is receive his love. Have you guys ever celebrated Christmas? Do you guys celebrate Christmas in Wales? Okay. Have you guys ever gotten a gift? Yeah. Yeah? And Chloe, what do you do when someone gives you a gift? Say it out loud. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. And do, you, do you just look at it? Yeah, you open it, right? So guys, God gave us a gift. And it's, and it's eternity, Liam. It's eternity. It's to be in a relationship with God. It's to be back with Adam and Eve. Come on up, Connor, Courtney. Come on up. You guys are such good actors and actresses. It's to be back to this. It's to be back walking with God. Yeah? Yeah, man. You're a good man. I like you. Courtney, you're awesome. Okay, go sit back there. You guys are good. <laughs> it's good. You know why I bring these people up? Because we remember it. And when you're sleeping tonight, and, and a year from now, you'll remember when Courtney and Connor came up on stage. You'll remember when Zach gave them a hug. Because God loves us. So we have a choice tonight. We have a choice tonight. There's a gift. God's giving us a gift, and here it is. Each one of us can receive it tonight. Each one of us can receive this gift. It's free. It's free. And do you know what's inside of it? Yeah. It's the payment. It's the payment that we needed to be, to be with Jesus, to be with God forever. Mikey, it's the payment to be with God forever. So how many of you guys want to receive this gift tonight? You, tonight you're sitting in, the, in your chair and you're saying, you know what? It, I have been unhappy with life. And I haven't felt content. And I feel like I'm medicating all this pain in my heart. And I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and reconciled me to God and wants a relationship with me. See guys, because it's not about a ticket. Listen, I got one more minute, okay? One more minute. One more minute. This is not about a ticket to heaven. This is about a relationship with Jesus who has a plan for our lives that's going to rock our worlds. Can you imagine tapping into the God that created all this world? Holy Head Mountain, the whole sea, Ireland, he created all, and you and me, and we're saying, we get to have a relationship with you. You mean, God, if I say I believe that you died for me and I receive this gift of salvation, I can walk with you again for the rest of life, and you'll show me what life's about, and you'll show me what you need me for? Yes. So how many of you guys want to receive that gift tonight? Stand up. Right now. Stand up. Who wants to receive that gift tonight? Okay? Okay, I want you to come forward. Come forward and we're going to pray together. Come forward. You know what? Hey, let's, let's be, let's, let's honor God doing this.
Okay, okay. Now, I want you guys to hold your hands out like you're really receiving a gift. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. You're just closing your eyes so you're not distracted by me right now. Okay? Okay, hold your hands up. Seriously, close your eyes. Okay, we're receiving a gift tonight of God's salvation. Okay, He loves us. He loves us. Okay, I want you to repeat after me. I want everyone. Why is it everyone stand up? Okay, we're all going to pray with you, okay? We're all going to pray with you because I believe that there's some out here. I believe that there's some out here that didn't come forward that want to pray this prayer. So I want everyone to close their eyes just to honor each other. And I want everyone to repeat after me, okay? Let's see this. Sorry. Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. And giving us salvation. And giving us salvation. We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. Yes. And we receive that you are happy with us. And we receive that you are happy with us. So Jesus. So Jesus. Right now. Right now. We have, we give you our lives. We give our lives. Just like Adam and Eve. Just like Adam and Eve. We want to have a relationship with you. We want to have a relationship with you. Forever. Forever. We want to go where you want us to go. We want to go where you want us to go. So take us there. Take us there. Okay? So hold your hands out like this. Say, say this. Jesus. Salvation. Thank you for saving me from hell. And I tell you, forgive me for my sins. I don't want to sin anymore. I want to do what you want me to do. Okay, so close your eyes. I'm going to pray for each one of you. Come on, this is serious. Yes. You have to go to the bathroom. Go. Come on, Zach, come up here. Uh, uh, Katie, Rebecca, and any of the girls, come up. Okay, we're going to pray over you guys. <laughs> Check this out. I want all of you to know here, I want all of you to know here that God, God did truly, fearfully, and wonderfully make us. In the mother's womb, God truly, fearfully, and wonderfully made us. He has a plan for us, and He he actually talks to us, God. Yeah. Okay, because of relationships. So just like I have a friendship with Katie, we can talk. Same with God. And you know how we know God more? It's through the Bible. Okay, so if any of you don't have Bibles, we want you to have Bibles, and we're going to be getting those for you. Okay, so just come up to me and talk to me about that. Okay? But we want to pray over you, and we're going to ask God this question. God, how... Can you just tell me a couple things of how you made me so I just kind of know how to live this life with you, okay? Maisie. Where's Maisie? Courtney. Courtney, you've received prayer like this, right? And, and how does it feel? Is it encouraging? Yeah, yeah. It's encouraging because God loves us. So we're going to pray over some people, and we love to pray over each one in this room. Tonight, if you want to stay for prayer, we'd love to, the Bible calls it prophesying, and it, it's simply a big word that, that means hearing what God thinks about you. And it's good, because God loves us. God loves us, okay? So, um, so we can um, maybe turn on a little uh, music on low, and then uh, we're just going to...